Dr. Rob Silverman here, how are you? We're gonna be talking about the IVD disc, the intervertebral disc. So many of my patients and so many doctors have had this conversation with me. I wanna share some insights on what can disrupt the intervertebral disc. Eight out of 10 Americans have lower back pain, so those intervertebral discs can be compromised. So with that being said, let's talk about some disruptors to the intervertebral disc and Let's really go through um, how that disc gets injured, both in a mechanical and a biochemical concept, and how we can fix it, and some of the people that you may want to seek out. So number one, the disruptors of nutrients. We all need nutrients to go to bones, ligaments, tendons, and our disc. Our disc is made out of fibrocartilage. The problem that we have with the disc is that it's avascular, meaning that it doesn't have ample blood flow. Without ample blood flow, it doesn't have the ability to carry nutrients from and into and get toxins to leave. So it doesn't have nutrient aggression and toxic egression. So with that being said, loading. So loading in a dysfunctional manner. The spine is made to be loaded in a specific manner. That manner is the spine is made to be compressed. Once we flex forward and it's loaded, it's an aberrant stress and can start damaging the structure in the disc. Our disc is simply made out of the nucleus in the center, kind of like this, and on the outside, an annulus. The annulus on the outside, its concentric rings, has an inner uh, annulus, which is very much like the gelatinless disc. Now, when I say a gelatinless disc, it's not like a hard jelly. It's actually like a liquid jelly, and that's a huge takeaway. The annulus, that inner one, is very much like that. It's very soft, but the outer annulus, which is near the bone, is much harder and has bony-like substances. Other things that may damage it are spinal positions. There are specific spinal positions. One of the biggest problems that people have is they bend at their lumbar spine. We're not truly made to flex at our lumbar spine. We only have what we call 28,000 lumbar flexions in our whole life. So let me put that in numbers. If we were to put our shoes on wrong every day from 5 to 40, by the time we're 40, with no other inappropriate movements, we all would have a herniated disc. So spinal position is critical. The best position is to bend at your hips. We call that a hip hinge. So if you look all the good athletes and all people that have good health, a dancer, they all move at their hips because they're engaging their glutes muscle in the body not per square inch lack of motion not moving the way to get nutrients into your spine is motion i.e. have a chiropractic everybody chiropractic stimulates 90% of the nutrients through adjustment now you guys know I don't talk about adjustment every time but we're talking about it now so movement to the spine enables nutrients to go into the spine and has a very healing performance oriented idea high frequency loading so a very high frequency it's sort of like cumulative trauma disorder we live in the world of cumulative trauma disorder so many of my patients walk in and said you know what i just bent over and my back hurt i don't understand it well it wasn't the last bend it was the thousand bends and this thousand and one bend is the one that puts you over the edge it's kind of like the straw that breaks the camel's back disc injury well, so many people have a disc injury. There is, by the way, there is no slip disc. There's no such thing as a slip disc. We have bulging discs. We have herniated discs. We have extruded discs. A bulge is a slight outpocketing of the disc material. A herniation is a tearing where it's sticking out but still attached. An extruded or protruded disc pertains to the idea that it's outside the area of the nucleus, excuse me, the outside the area of the annulus, and floating around. Herniated discs, believe it or not, have the worst outcome, even worse than extruded and protruded. Aging, well, we all have degeneration as we age. Our discs seem to shrink. They lose what we call hydration. And that's one of the biggest reasons why people are shorter as they get older. Gravity pulls the discs together, squeezes out all the water. It's kind of like squeezing down on a sponge a little bit. Smoking. Smoking is one of the most deleterious things you can do for overall health. Smoking decreases blood to the spine, therefore not allowing the spine to recover from any injury. 
uh, an acidic environment. So everything is more positive when it's alkaline, over 70. Injuries, poor diet, lead you to an acidic environment. Acidic environment is ruinous to your overall health and really bad for outcomes on spinal health. Last but not least, lack of nutrient bioavailability. We don't have nutrients if we're not eating them. If we're not supplementing with them, we don't have the ability for our discs and the areas in our disc to heal. So I'm gonna switch this over and let's talk about nutrient delivery mechanisms to the intervertebral disc. Uh, there you go, I finally passed switching out the whiteboard. Here we go. So here we have metabolic byproduct removal. So here's your nutrients, the specific nutrients you need. You're gonna get your nutrients from food, a good quality organic food. You can speak of nutrients like glucosamine, chondroitin, boswellia, turmeric, and the like. Any kind of nutrient, great products that'll enable you to get the nutrients into your body you have vascular supply routes. You only have two. Those two supply routes are the capillary beds in your vertebral end plate. Your vertebral end plate is on the outside of the disc. There's an end plate because the disc connects to a bone. There are some Sharpies fibers that connect to the bone. They're kind of like the clinger on to the bone. They actually have some blood flow. In addition, there is some blood flow in the peripheral annulus fibrosis because again, the disc is largely avascular. Three quarters of it is avascular. In addition to that, you need specific transport mechanisms. These transport mechanisms are very interesting in that we have something called convection. Convection is powered by specific pressure from mechanical loading. And in that mechanical loading, it's pushing the gradients and the nutrients in. So these are large particles that need to go inside to the disc. Whereas diffusion is what we call a gradient soluble, some smaller nutrients like glucose and the like. All this, this concept leads to nutrient ingestion and toxic egress. Another study pertaining to this, which we have right over here is um, speaking about what we call the multifidi. The multifidi is the number one muscle in your lower back. It's a key for lumbar extension. When you get multifidi atrophy, which is very typical after a lower back injury, that atrophy will, uh, tra uh, atrophy will not allow you to hold your spine in place. So that's a very easy thing. Someone comes in my office, I put my thumb, and literally it feels like a sponge versus a hard rock. With that being said, the best way to attenuate any damage to the multifidi is physical activity. So physical activity like bracing, you know, core exercises like planks, side planks, and the like. So let's take a look at what I'm trying to say there. It, what we're talking about is, if you have a back injury, here is your protocol. Real simple, chiropractic manipulation. Specific nutrients in a good quality organic diet. Supplements, glucosamine, chondroitin, boswellia, turmeric, hops, probiotics, exercise, planking, decompression, low level laser therapy. All these lead to a healing environment to allow your disc material to heal. So just because you have a herniated disc, don't associate herniated disc with surgery. Understand there's a mechanical stressor, there's a biochemical stressor, and there's a lack of exercise stressor all leading to your conditions. So if you have any questions about lower back injuries, feel free, you can comment below. What I should have said at the beginning was, anybody who has lower back, you had to hear the whole thing to get there, just put an L for lower back pain. Let's do that. Do we have any questions right now? Or we are copacetic and on our way somewhere on July 4th. So hopefully everybody had a great time listening to this. Any questions, feel free to reach out. Dr. Rob, always yours in health.